Mattel came out with Giulio Jellington in 2015, and in 2021, we mutilate her. What? That's right. We are going to take the Monster High 18-inch doll we bought at a yard sale and cut off parts of the doll, and then remove those parts of the doll. <laughs> So we could turn her into the doll Angie from the Resident Evil Village game. Oh shit! First we remove her head so Pat can remove all the old paint and repaint her face. Let me tell you, removing her head was no easy task. No matter what they show you on other videos or tell you, it is very hard to remove Monster High doll heads because inside the neck they have this little extra prong kind of thing that makes it very difficult to get it off. It can be done. You can boil them, which we tried. Didn't work so good for us, but what always works for us best is a blow dryer and some tools. Okay, after blow dryer, some tools and brute force. <coughs> A little bit more blow dryer, a little bit more brute force, we finally in the end managed after several minutes of fighting with it, the both of us, we managed to get this doll's head off. So decapitating the head, so to speak, just didn't seem like enough. Hey, I'm going to talk to you, do you mind? Thank you. So now we decided to also dismantle the arms and legs. There's a good reason why we were going to do this. But first, let me explain to you how we did it. We took a blow dryer and we softened up the plastic so we could separate it and remove the joint pieces. And a little bit of a tool too so that we could do some amputation. Okay, to make this doll, we needed some really good pictures of her. But unfortunately, in the Resident Evil game, she has a very short part in it. But we still managed to get some fairly good, good enough pictures anyway to make this doll. The reason we are removing her limbs is so that we can add rings to her joints to connect these limbs, as seen in this picture. What seemed like hours later, we finally got the joint out. Now a word from Tingles the Clown. Thank you, Tingles, for that uplifting message. Now, back to the show. We are dislocating her arms. These just naturally pull out. These don't. We have to actually separate the elbows and cut them. We've already did one, but we show you the other one and how hard they are. So we're prizing them apart, heating it up, prizing it apart, and he's going to have to clip the little piece in the center. So like a little rod. No, oh, it's... it's oh. Okay, we managed to get the limbs apart without injuring anyone. And so now we're just going to connect the limbs together using little jewelry rings. To reconnect the limbs, I used heavy gauge jump rings I got at Hobby Lobby. For the legs, I used 12 millimeter, and for the arms, I used 9 millimeter. Inside her head, you may not find brains. <laughs> Excuse me? But what you will find is a whole lot of glue, and glue that's eaten to the plastic, almost melting it, making the hair very hard to get out. Even after boiling this in hot water for about an hour, it is still hard to get the hair out. So don't let anyone tell you this is an easy job, because it's not, and it takes about an hour to get it all out. Okay, her hair's been removed except for a couple of strands. Now she's ready to go to Pat for some face sculpting and repaint. And I'm going to get started on her dress. Alright guys, it's my turn to show you how I painted and sculpted this face. Cutting out the jaw was really tricky. There's no take backs. 
but it turned out all right. Kind of did a rough sketch of where everything's gonna go. And time to mix up some epoxy sculpt. Started out by kind of roughing it in, rough shapes, and then we refine it after that. Put in where all of those cracks are gonna go. After it all dried, then it's safe to dremel and carve on. Time for the teeth. Use that hobby knife to cut up some teeth. Got to offset them just a little bit to make them more realistic. Mash it down with the hobby knife. Each little tooth. We are good to go. It's really soft right now. I had to set overnight and it was ready to go to kind of permanently put it in place with a little bit more epoxy sculpt, which also had to set. But we are ready. All right, let's put some paint on it. This is some black wash. It works great for aging. It's into all the cracks. Now we can start adding some color little base colors, some grays underneath. She is actually a little yellowish, so now we're gonna start adding the actual color. Dremel off those drips that are on the original Monster High doll. And more layers and layers of color. Eventually she will come out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how she turned out. Let's age her here and we're done. Back to Belinda. I decided to use a Barbie wedding dress pattern. I'm going to take these pattern pieces and I'm going to alter them to look like Angie's dress. Now I'm going to take tracing paper and I'm going to trace out the pattern and make alterations so it looks more like Angie's dress. After making alterations to the pattern, I cut the dress out. If you're never planning on using this pattern again, this is the quickest way to lengthen the pattern. I thought I was going to have to cut extra skirt pieces, but it looks like this one piece is going to fit her just fine. So you think I'm skinny? Thanks. Now I have a headache. For the lace skirt, I didn't need it to be as wide as the inner skirt or as long, so I was able to use just the regular pattern piece. Unfortunately, I didn't have the same lace design that was on the Angie doll's dress, so I had to kind of work with what I had. So I took different lace trimming and I basically stitched it onto the lace. So now I have the bodice section stitched together, the inside and the outer lace, and I'm pressing open the seams. Here I'm using a piece of particle board from an old shelf that I used to have. It works really good because I don't have to worry about if I mess it up or anything. So I take the skirt and basically scissors, the sharp edge of a scissors, and I just work it until it looks the way I want it to look. So you can take the scissors and go up and down scraping. You can cut some edges and then scrape. All of it together gives it that old, rough, worn out look. Here I have sewn a wide stitch. You can also do this by hand, but I did it on my sewing machine. And then what I do is I just take the thread on each ends and I pull the fabric just to give it this gather for the waistline. I have stitched on the layer edging of the lace skirt. Next I will add a gather stitch to the outer lace part of the skirt. 
and then stitch both layers together. Okay, both layers of the skirt have been sewn together. Next, I'm going to attach the bodice, and then the dress is going to be done except for the snaps on the back. Yay! Okay, bodice is attached and snaps are on. Now I just need to do the outer layer skirt. The outer layer skirt was made by taking several strips of lace, stitching them together to give it the look that it is all one piece of lace. Then I will add a ruffle around the edges and then form elastic along the waistline and add a hook and I'm done. Sounds easy, huh? I wish. Okay, I've added the elastic to the waist of the outer layer skirt and a hook and eye. And all I gotta do now is make sure it fits. Let's hope so. It fits perfectly. Yay, another layer done. One more layer to go. Dress is done and I love how it turned out. Really proud of it. To make the veil, what I did is I took a long piece of lace that I had and I folded it and then I cut the top corner and then stitched it to give it kind of that rounded back of the head look. Next, I'm going to trim the edge of it and then I'm going to stitch it to give it kind of a scalloped edge look. Okay, I have the edge stitched on the veil and I have to admit, I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. It looks pretty good. Since the wig is going to be really thin, like she's lost some of her hair, I thought it was best to glue it on. So that's what I do. I take just sections of hair and glue it directly on the doll's head until it looks right or creepy. Yeah, until it looks creepy. Next, I took some fake flowers I had bought for a dollar at the Dollar Tree and I cut them and I glued them on because I tried painting the flowers but they just didn't look right. So I just cut them and glued them on with a little bit of the leaves and then added the veil and I was done. To make the wristband, neckband, and the shoes, I used Workla Thermoplastic. You can get it on Amazon.com. I will leave a link to it in the description box underneath this video. I got the idea when I was watching another YouTuber and I will probably pronounce her name incorrectly so I will post it on the screen and also a link to her video in our description box under this video. But she made the vampire villain and she used the very same doll. I watched the video when we had this doll almost completely done and when I seen that she was using work blood I thought oh I never even thought about work blood. So I've used it before in the past. It is a great plastic material that when heated, it, it, you only have to heat it just a little bit with like a blow dryer and then it is workable. It's almost like clay. You have to work with it fairly fast and you don't want to overheat it and it is sandable and paintable. a pattern for the doll shoes and then I took the workable thermoplastic cut it out and shaped the shoes the best I possibly could and I think they turned out pretty good okay next I'm gonna have Pat to paint the shoes he'll paint the neck band and the wristbands and they're gonna look really good after he gets done the shoes are painted and she's all done I hope you guys enjoyed the video So what do you think about my and Pat's makeover? 